Hi, welcome to the Read With Me series. Today, we are going to see the Yojana special issue of October 2021 under Science and Technology. The article coming under Disaster Management, The Himalayan Flood by Pradeep Srivastava. Rivers originating in the Himalayas are the lifeline of one-fifth of the global population. Large floods that are becoming more frequent in this region due to the rising population and urbanization are increasingly disastrous. This article provides a brief account of the latest tools of the flood monitoring and flood mapping that can help planners in designing the strategies towards flood mitigation and disaster risk reduction. The Himalayas extend for about 2400 km from west to east with wind varying between 200 to 400 km. The two syntaxes of this mountain are drained by the river Indus west and the Brahmaputra east. The Ganga river system largely drains the central part of the Himalayas. Over the last few decades, urbanization has led to the dramatic increase in the population living in this mountain belt. During the past 50 years, the number of people living in the Himalayan region has grown from 19.9 to 52.8 million and if the population keeps growing at the same rate, it is expected to touch the mark of 260 million by 2061. During the same period, a significant surface warming trend of Himalaya is predicted, where it is suggested that regions 2000 m above sea level will witness a high rate of surface warming. This temperature rise will increase available atmospheric energy and total precipitation which is combination with mountain fragility and growing urban centers is a perfect condition for disasters. The 2010 floods of Leh, 2013 Kedarnath flood and 2021 Rishiganga floods are a few examples of volatility that extreme rainfall, the geology of the Himalayas and urbanization jointly led to. The reports of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change indicate an overall increase in the frequency frequency of high intensity rainfall events in the Himalayas and this requires a careful understanding of extreme hydrological events as they interact through variable orography and geology of the Himalayas. The availability data of flood monitoring hardly extends to 100 years which is not enough for flood mapping and reconstruction of longer flood records in different thematic settings of the Himalayas is required. The Himalayas. The Himalayan mountain belt tectonically is divisible into from north and south, the Indus suture zone ISZ of Ladakh, the Tethian Himalayas, the Him higher Himalayan crystalline zone, the lesser Himalaya and the Shivalik of outer Himalaya. The ISZ lies in the rain shadow zone of the Indian summer monsoon above an elevation of almost 3000 meter above sea level where the scanty rainfall occurs mostly under the influence of westerlies. The river Indus and Sanskar which flow through the region therefore get most of their discharge from westerlies partly from ism and snow and glacial melt however the flood in these rivers are normally induced by the interplay of ism and upper atmospheric interaction the area is devoid of vegetation and due to extreme temperature physical weathering of rocks occur that forms a thick debris mantle on hill slopes this debris mantle during excessive snow melting and rainstorm event fail and block small and large stream that breathe subsequently to create floods. The Tethian belt also behave in a similar manner even though it lies at the northern fringe of ISM and receives a slightly higher amount of rainfall as compared to ISZ. The higher Himalayan crystalline zone lies above an elevation of 1800 meter above sea level and receives full spectrum of ISM rainfall. This zone is characterized by steep hill slopes and deep gorges with high gradient drainage system. The lesser Himalaya and outer Him Shivalik Himalaya are gentler and also receive a high amount of ISM rainfall. The orography and geology of the Himalaya is such that from south to north, the first physiographic transition occurs above the Shivalik Himalayas and the second occurs at the base of the high Himalayan crystalline zone where there exists a regional fault called the main central thrust. The two physiographic transitions form barriers to upcoming ISM rainfall front and receive focused precipitation. Therefore, Southern Front largely has two belt of high rainfall that coincide with two physiographic transition. The MCT fault zone which is characterized by highly deformed and pulverized rocks where the hill slopes are of steeper gradient in combination with focused rainfall is most vulnerable to mass wasting and landslides. The orography and pattern of rainfall distribution decide the damage pattern and hotspot of erosion in the event of large flood. Another important thing to remember is that the headwater of the rivers like Indus Ganga and the river draining the central Himalayan ranges lie in rain deficient arid zone where extreme rainfall even can potentially create glacial or marine damped lake outburst and massive snow melt leading to a flood. 
However, the headwater of the Kiputra due to different orography and elevation received 1000 mm per A of ISM rainfall with downstream catchment greater than 3000 mm. These contrasting characteristics between the two systems create floods that have discharge of different magnitude. The Brahmaputra is known to have experienced flood of mega flood category where the Ganga and Indus historically have experienced large flood. Therefore, the flood magnitude in the Himalayas is controlled by geology, orography and rainfall distribution. Causes of flood in the Himalayas In general, the large flood in the Himalayas are caused by intense rainfall event, landslide dammed lake outburst, glacial dammed lake outburst, cloud burst. Often during warmer and strengthened monsoon years, the southern front of the Himalayas receive longer spell of precipitation that cause large flood that may last for almost full peak in the monsoon season. Such flood may have broader hydrographs ranging from weeks to months. Such rainfall phases that occur due to uh, stationary monsoon trough may also cause series of landslides in steeper gradient reaches of the mountain, where the area around the MCT zone is most vulnerable. During such years, ISM front also penetrate deeper into what generally remains under the rain shadow zone ISZ in Ladakh and produces flooding there as well. During these rainfall events, breaches of glacial and landslide dammed lake also occur that compounds the flood magnitude and induce multiple flood hydrograph. Glacial lake outburst floods are generated by the breach of water bodies that are formed due to the damming of streams by surging or advancing glaciers or impounding hill slope runoff and snow melt between the two moraine ridges. Shiok River in the Himalayan Karakoram region frequently witnessed such glacial damming and the two events of glove in this rivers which occurred in the year 1779 and 1932 are well documented. The 2013 Kedarnath incident in the Garuhawal Himalayas, besides widespread rainfall, was compounded by a breach of a moraine dammed lake in the Chaubari glacial region. Landslide lake outburst floods are analogous with the dams being formed by landslides. The landslide activity that generally occur being monsoon or an earthquake may potentially dam small channel for a longer duration. Example, landslide dammed lake Gohana Tal of Birhali Ganga survived for 76 years. These dams may breach and cause floods in the Downstream regions as breach of Gohna Tal of Birahi Ganga in 1970 devastated the town of Srinagar and significantly damaged the Ganga Canal downstream in Haridwar. Likewise, the Satlaj River Valley also witnessed massive devastation due to LLOFs in the year 2000 and 2005. In Ladakh, Himalaya, a detailed account of 161 landslide events damming rivers in the Indus River Basin are described. Summarily, the Flood in the Himalayas are common and are caused by a combination of natural surface processes and rainfall distribution. However, the magnitude of flood is a function of overall geology, orography, catchment wide, distribution of lakes, landslide zones and rainfall. Flood mapping. Mapping of floods has four elements, vertical rise in driver level, rate of rising of flood, flow velocity and lateral inundation of flood plains. The first point requires precise measurement of flood levels in rivers and streams which is normally done at river gauging stations. These gauging stations can now be equipped with state of art, internet of things and radar to quickly transmit the data to remote locations and flood management centers. Radar can help in tracking the location of intense rainfall and the temporal evolution of the storm. The rate of rise in flow flood is a function of how the drainage network efficiently delivers surface runoff to the channel. This will factor in parameters like infiltration, drainage density, gradient and vegetation cover etc. and will also decide the lag between the peak of rainfall event and of the hydrograph. The assessment of this time lag is key to activate alert systems and evacuation. The cause of flood is also important in this context like regional high intensity rainfall will allow gradual rise of flood level where the events GLOFs and LLOFs will induce a faster rate of rise in flood levels. Therefore, flood level or rate measurement has to be inclusive of data at various levels. In most cases, the flood level observation is not chronicled beyond hydrate years which may not be enough to understand the long-term variability of floods and the forcing factors behind large events. We know whether the occurrences in 1970, 2013, 2021 of the Garwal Himalaya are isolated event or they are riding over a long-term climatic cycle. This requires an understanding of geological arches. The slack water deposits that are composed of centimeter to meter scale coupled of sand and silt represent an individual flood event. The stacks of these deposits containing records of several such events are common and found at tributary junctions, wider segments of channels on top of the terrace caves and behind rocky embayments along the rivers. These are the locations where sudden shacking in flood velocities take place. The height of these deposits are above river levels informing on the elevation so as to which the flood levels rose and can be precisely mentioned. Uh, differently global positioning. 
systems. These deposits can be dated using opti optical stimulated luminescence and CAMS dating techniques on charcoal specs. The SWDs are explored in the Indus, Satlaj, Ganga and Brahmaputra where the history of floods going past 15 Ka is reconstructed. Chronologically, constrained wood debris lying at the higher levels along with the river course and debris flow deposit can be other archives that can be used to reconstruct extreme hydrological event. The lateral extent of food flood inundation can be mapped using satellite images and lidar. The precision and resolution of this data at finer scales can pre help prepare maps of meaningful use. The flood velocities are generally measured using current meters, acoustic Doppler, current profiles, tracers and floaters. The most precise would be Doppler current profile as it can measure flow of velocity at different depth and can average out the turbulence. Besides above one parameter largely ignored is flood sediment load. It is important as it imparts buoyancy to flood water which is an event of large flood is detrimental to stability of infrastructure such as dams, bridges and culvert. Sediments load of flood waters can be measured by sediment monitoring gauges or sensors equipped with laser in situ scatter transmissometry or by physically sampling during the time of the flood. Satellite data can also help in getting generalized ideas on sediment load, reducing flood vulnerability in the Himalayas. The floods are natural process and adaptable through though the damage done by these events can be minimized if attempted using scientifically sound database and models. Proper understanding of the orography of the Himalayas and how past flood events have interacted with it and what were the damage pattern can help in preparing the damage predictive model of the Himalaya. This model can help in deciding the focus, magnitude and type of infrastructure development to be done in the Himalayas. The foremost word this is monitoring at various levels like installing a dense network of flood gauging system and radar in various drainage basin in the Himalayas. Channeling real-time data to flood management centers using the Internet of Things. Longer time series of data archival using large monitoring networks. Historical and geological archives ought to be prepared. Landslides and glacial lake monitoring systems should be in place and linked to flood management centers via Internet of Things. The combination of data on flood levels, flood hydrographs and lateral inundation can be used to manage the floods and minimize the destruction. The inundation map prepared using satellite lid or LIDAR combined with the maps of social infrastructure if analyzed on GIS platforms and artificial intelligence use Seeing long time series of data set can provide predictive models of flood events and the damage patterns. Thank you.